once you are okay with being in your own skin and once you're more secure with yourself, you're down to just be on camera and just be and express who the fuck you are, what you're feeling, etc. <laughs> It's 416 on December 23rd, 2018, and today is Reflections 24. Uh, yeah, and Reflections, by the way, is a weekly video and audio series that I produce where I get on camera and I just reflect on my week. I talk about what's on my mind, where I won this week, what I could have done better, what worked, my lessons that I learned, uh, some challenges I'm having, growth points, and yeah, I think I've been things I'm obsessed with, and uh, just that type of type of vibe, and uh, aiming to document my journey on a weekly basis, in addition to also trying to bring people value who who listen to it at the same time. So, without further ado, let's get the fuck into this. What's been on my mind? Uh, what's on my mind is I'm grateful for Wooly specifically. I was just thinking last night, well, I went to go see Wooly last night, uh, his set at Club 77 in, I think it's Hamilton, could be wrong, something like that, and or Brantford, or, I forget where the fuck Club 77 is, but awesome set, and I was just like feeling gratitude for how much music brings me joy and how much... Uh, either it sets in like in person or recorded or just listening to the music like it just brings me so much joy so much happiness and uh, it is such a beautiful escapism for me I fucking love music specifically dubstep and uh, yeah I'm just very grateful for the access we have with, with all that music just incredible absolutely anxious for 2018 we're so close right now we're uh we're a week and a bit away from the new year. So I have a lot of, I'll have a lot of reflection and, and goal setting slash planning to do. And, uh, I am going, I, so normally I do wait until last second to do it, but I'm going to start a little bit earlier this time. I should be starting either today or tomorrow and I'll start the reflection process. And then after I'm done the reflection process, then I move on to goal setting and planning once I have that data from the year and I'm not just discarding the year. Uh, so looking forward to starting that earlier earlier instead of later. Uh, Christmas is on my mind a lot as well. Uh, that's always fun. Paul's not. I don't like Christmas. What were my favorite wins? Page pagination. I had talked about in the past the pagination thing I built for like it's just a simple generator if, if you will for the actual UI at the bottom so it's something like Google it's a pagination site typically where it's like at the bottom you can go and see like page one page two page three that is what page pagination is it's separating the items quote-unquote and for Google's case it's uh, websites so it's, only, it's I think it's only 10 websites per page or something like that and uh it's separating them so you can easily access page four if you want to go to that or 400 or just one. So anyways, the building of, I had to completely rewrite what I already written. So that basically became null that all that work. However, it did prepare me for what I was going to expect to, uh, to build. And it did, I did use some of the code, but most of it, I just completely rewrote and that became quite a, challenge because my brain was so fucking dead that day and it did take a lot out of me but uh it did come out quite well i love the design i love the way it works it's uh it's quite pretty i'm i'm a fan and so that is i loved working on that i also loved actually paginating the pages so now there's like actual function so it's it's taking only 10 of my pages on joshmoxie.com per per page if that makes sense. So you're seeing 10 page on a section view. So you're seeing like my podcast page, you're seeing 10 pages of podcast, and then you can go to page two, shows the next 10 pages, that type of thing. And like all the functionality to fetch and sort the data and filter for the correct ones in that section and stuff like that. I don't, I've just been working a lot on joshmoxie.com. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, 
rewriting or sorry, redesigning a lot of things, making sure I actually liked the design this time and making it a lot simpler. I rewrote the background styler, which I loved working on as well, uh, to make things just, I, I'm trying to make my code more simpler right now and my, my, just the website as a whole, just much more simpler and less complicated because I did make it very complicated for myself on the first time. And that's a, that's a lesson learned right there. Another awesome win is starting my series with Bry, and you might know him as Jungle Book or Brian Talangzi. I forget. I'm so bad at pronouncing your name. I'm so sorry, Bry. His last name is uh, harder to pronounce than you might think. And yeah, we started a podcast yesterday, or a series, if you will. We're not sure if we're going to turn it into a podcast yet, but we're starting it out as a collaborative series that'll go on my podcast. And I'm sure it's up by the time you're seeing this because I'm going to prioritize it because of 2018 and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, that went pretty good. It came out fucking massive, but it was uh, it was a cool start. I'm glad we did it because it's been something we've wanted to do for a long time. Just haven't actually felt like it was the right time or taken the action on it because it wasn't the right time yet, in my opinion. So also resumed Greek God. That felt fucking great. Loved getting back into the flow of things after my shoulder has been ready to go. Thank God for that. Uh, although I am aching like a motherfucker right now from returning. I was surprised at how much my body was aching yesterday after, after that workout on Friday. Uh, it was insane. Like I woke up in such pain and I did a little, I think I did a little video on this little air. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, the gems intro and and the dividers. I also loved working on this. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm pleased with a lot of the things I'm working on right now. It's bringing me a lot of joy. And by the way, just in case this isn't fucking clear, I only just cover the things I loved working on the most or the things I felt were most worthy of mentioning. I'm not going to cover fucking any, any, everything and anything in this area. It's just going to be like key highlights, if you will. What worked? documenting more. This has been a really cool thing because of uh, the new feature with Instagram, just press and hold. That's been so helpful for me for, I'm specifically talking about Instagram stories, by the way. There's this new functionality where you can just, when you're recording a story, typically it ended at 15 seconds. Now you can press and hold kind of like Snapchat and it just continues, it continues recording for you, thankfully. And it's been really helpful for me because with stories, I usually want to go on like one minute rants, not just like 15 seconds, because it's hard to to zero down the message to that just that and still bring value because usually con some sort of context or background is required to get a proper message across. And that's been really helpful to just be able to get on camera and uh, not have to like worry about people seeing the one part and like it's awkward when you when there's like only one message there and you're like so you record the 15 second and then it was people could see it and then you recorded the other 15 seconds and then people could see it. like it's just it was this awkward thing but now when i'm recording all of it once it's a lot easier because i don't have to worry about people seeing it before it's done like i can scrap it if it doesn't come out right there's just so much good shit i'm really really enjoying that and also just getting on camera more often for long form and just talking content and or sorry talking stuff for my podcast and just documenting what's going on in my world. I'm excited for all things documentation right now. Coffee in my smoothie. I actually just had a smoothie and uh, this was also the case. I literally put in fucking grinds. Like I, is it grinds? Yeah, it is grinds. I put in coffee grinds and it adds a nice taste for one. And it also leaves me feeling quite high on caffeine. So I'm, I'm a fan. And this has just been like a random idea I had this week and I decided to just go after it and I'm pleased at how it came out. Using Media Encoder instead of Premiere Pro for exporting. Yeah, I've been like using Premiere this entire time. So it would like stop me from editing more. It would also stop me or uh, it would go slower for some odd reason. Media Encoder is so damn fast. Like it goes two to three times faster. So I'm definitely going to experiment with this going forward because this just seems like absolutely the way. Not trying to be anything on camera, but instead just being on camera. 
and just whatever shows up shows up this is uh something that we also covered in Bry's podcast uh the one we did together and i just think it's something that's very top of mind right now which is i feel like many times it could be easy to feel like you need to be something other than yourself when you're on camera and i think that's utter bullshit uh i'd rather just be whatever i'm being in that moment and just document that uh i think it comes from a an insecurity if you're not willing to do that and a lack of wanting to be in your own skin type or uh, yeah something along the lines of that and once you are okay with being in your own skin and once you're more secure with yourself you're down to just be on camera and just be and express who the fuck you are what you're feeling etc so really appreciating the fact that like i'm not trying to put this perfection thing on a pedestal anymore with creating content i'm just fucking I'm just creating and whatever comes out, or rather not even creating, just documenting. Whatever comes out, comes out. Hopefully it's good and yeah, hopefully it brings value. What didn't work and how can I improve it? A 1.5 hour podcast with Brian and I. Like I will, I will, I do desire a like one hour-ish type of, maybe like anywhere from 30 to maybe 115, but I think an hour and a half is a little bit pushing it. Uh, so in the future, being cautious of the the questions I ask because I asked like certain questions that elicited big responses <laughs> at times we probably should have closed. And what else there was, and that recap at the end was way too long. Um, we could have just said our final words or whatever instead of, recapping for like 10 minutes it felt like the the whole thing and then um yeah having it'll lower in future episodes because we'll have more of an outline if you will and less covering like the origin stories and stuff like that so i am looking forward to how that goes in the future watching walking dead videos um considering the season is not even on right now and these are not walking dead videos per se these are detailed explanations and future projections and all this shit (laughs) bless me uh around walking dead so it's not even the actual show it's just me nerding the fuck out and i feel like such a fucking loser because i know i am wasting so much time on this uh it's like it's not even so much time it's just these are minutes i could be spending in such better ways so i don't feel great when i'm watching them anymore it was fun while it lasted it's gotta fucking go now not posting on social media in uh month and a half this is literally embarrassing at this point i am i am withholding so much value from the world it's fucking selfish as fuck thankfully i'm still doing things like this so that's good but i still need to get back to the basics on on micro content and that is something I really had to fix in 28, 2019. This pattern of just like inconsistency on social media, it's fucking ridiculous. So with something like reflections, this is something that got me to be consistent with content. I had to figure out ways and hacks to do the same thing on social media. And I also had to figure out how to make it shorter, how to make less it's almost i don't want to say less quality but less perfect content meaning like i can i can sometimes just get wrapped up in the actual content rather than remembering that the message is actually what matters not the uh quality nature not the the lighting or the camera quality or the audio quality or whatever it's just what's the real message trying to keep points in my head while i'm recording this is, I can fucking do this, but I'm, I'm minimizing my potential for a piece of content because I can forget what the fuck I was trying to outline and how many points I wanted or the key points I wanted to cover. And I'll get like on deep on point one, they'll be like, oh yeah, what the fuck was point two and three? So it just is so much better when I take the time beforehand to quickly write out a few things that I want to cover and then reference the fucking phone this one specifically reference this while i'm recording because it brings me back 
to exactly what I want to cover so I can make sure I can bring the most fucking value. What were my biggest lessons? I realized how much long form content can drain me. It is remarkable how drained I was yesterday after Brian and I recorded that podcast. Like I was, my brain was so fucking dead. It felt like I was coding for like six hours. It was so strange. I don't understand how it could have been like that, but it just was. It might've been because I was low on sleep or something like that, but man, I was fucking exhausted. So, and it, I'm glad it came out the way it did. And it also just juiced the hell out of me. So that was funny to watch. And uh, I have more respect for podcasters now after doing something like that because, uh, or experiencing that the brain fog, if you will, the the almost like exhaustion that I experienced after. And I think this happens with speakers as well, where you just get really fucking tired after being on stage for so long. So that was really interesting to watch. Really fascinating. I've noticed that as I make more content for my stories on Instagram, my views continue to drop, which is, it's funny in nature because it's, uh, it's like weeding out the people who cannot handle deeper topics and stuff like that. So I'm pleased with it. And it's showing me, it's not even showing me because I don't always like look, but it's pushing away people who don't resonate it, resonate with it. And it is bringing people closer to me who do vibe with it, who do resonate with it. And that is so crucial. And I think that's just like everything right there. Yeah, we're not for everyone. So it is not worth our time to pretend like we are for everyone. And it is absolutely worth it to prune your audience, quote unquote, because a lot of people for me right now are not going to be the people who follow me long term. There's just like a lot of people from the, from my past, to be quite frank. So, and uh, a very small percentage that are part of my future. I realized last night at Wooly how important it is to have the correct people around me in the crowd. Uh, it's like a combination of good people, people who are fun, people who are almost like on the edge of like funny, if you will, like people who are willing to like laugh at all this type of shit. Cause it's just, it is funny at times, certain things that go on. Um, cool people, if you will, like they're just chill. They're not like weird or anything like that. Uh, yeah, these type of people and ideally all four, they meet that criteria. And having these type of people around me at shows is so fucking crucial to my show experience. And it doesn't need to be people I know per se. I can just like meet new people that have these qualities, but I get such a high off of people who will have fun with me. I try to like have fun with people around me in the crowd. And if they don't want to have fun with me, fuck you, because that's just no fun for either of us. But if you do choose to have fun with me, it's fucking amazing. And I, so we are both getting a lot of joy out of it. It is an absolute blast. And I like, I'm going to go fucking hard as shit because it's a dubstep show. That's how I fucking roll. And ideally, if you can match my energy, that would be incredible. And it becomes so much fucking fun for both of us. So I love like, I experienced this last night with a couple of people and it was just like great that they were matching my energy and having so much fun with me. And, uh, I just, it's so much fucking fun when people do that. Um, specifically what I'm, I'm referring to is like people I don't know and I'm just meeting at the time, not even like, hi, by the way, I'm Josh. No, just like no words spoken, just purely having fun. I think it's the funniest fucking thing. And when people can have fun with me like that, I love them so damn much. I took a week off of working out as I've talked about to heal up my shoulder. It healed, thank God. And now that I'm back, or before I, I returned, I was like very uncomfortable with getting back into it. I don't know why, but I was just like, did not want to. It felt very awkward. Um, but once I was there, it was awesome. But uh, I was just fascinated that even as addicted as I thought I was to working out, there is still that resistance that can creep in and try to can like my brain was trying to rationalize why I shouldn't go back to working out. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, thank God I don't listen to it on certain things and uh, just decided to just fucking do it anyway because that is absolutely the way in situations like that. 
And uh, you know it when it's resistance versus a gut feeling. And it was absolutely resistance there because it was pure thought and not a gut feeling that was trying to tell me don't do this type of thing. So really glad to be back though, but it was just fucking hilarious to watch how resistance, resistant I was to returning. What challenges did I experience? One of the main challenges I had this week was reflections and how it's not fucking rendering properly. There was a bunch of fuck ups without media encoder. You've actually, there was one with media encoder and I feel like I'm saying encoder wrong or incorrectly. Uh, and it sounds really weird when I'm listening to myself say it, but that's a side side note. <laughs> it, yeah, reflections has just not been rendering and I'm really, I'm cutting it close though. I could catch up to tw in 2018. I don't think I'm actually gonna be able to catch up at this point. Um, I took my sweet ass time. Granted, I wasn't like consciously like not choosing to, it was just a lot of software fuck ups because it's Premiere, it happens, all types of errors, left, right, and center. And, uh, but thank God, it's such an incredible software. So I'm grateful for that. Oh, not being able to maintain my brain capacity, if you will, all day, or rather, uh, mental energy, we can call it that. So not being able to maintain my mental energy all day. This is a challenge for me because I can only code so much. I can only work so much in a day on certain certain tasks. And that really makes me sad because I would love if I could work every fucking second and it output uh, equally on all those. That's not really realistic to think about in this present moment. That might be a limiting belief. I'm open to exploring that more, but... Yeah, it is, uh, it is a challenge for me. I would like to fix it, not sure how. I, I feel in this moment like there is a solution to it down the line. I'm just not, it. <laughs> I have zero logic about how that might happen, but I think it's possible. That's actually a lie. I do have some ideas, but I'm just not sure if they're viable or not. Time to fucking tell. Where did I grow the most? Uh, an interview with Waterloo Small Business, which I think I'll get rejected for, which I'm excited about because <laughs> uh, you know me and my fuel. I love to prove people wrong. So looking forward to hopefully getting rejected by that. And also that page pagination, I grew a lot from that because that was just a lot of uh, a lot of mental uphill climbing, if you will. So yeah, that was a process and a half and it still has so long to go in terms of the ideal code, if you will. So yeah, <laughs> writing a resume, had to do that for that Waterloo small business thing and came out pretty interesting actually. Where I, How I grew a lot from it is because it's very uncomfortable for me to touch on my experience, touch on my skills, touch on all these things because it's so out there and so different. And I also don't feel like I have enough experience. I always feel like I need more type of thing. It's a very big insecurity for me. I always feel like I am not enough in certain aspects, so I have to do more. And I feel like that's actually a big reason why I am fueled to take action so much is because I just never feel like I am hitting my full potential. I always just feel like there's so much more I could be doing and giving and, uh, yeah. And at the same, I, and then at the same time, I'm like equally, equally channeling from like this, I am enough place. So it's very, it's a weird dynamic how it goes. So like even my affirmation today I wrote down was I am enough. And I quite frequently write that down. And, uh, but it's like that balance of the two, like I am enough on a soul level. I am not enough on a physical level. So and what I was going to say there in addition to that would be when I was writing the resume, I was doing it in very different ways than most people would probably write theirs. I was just keeping it real. I didn't want to do this bullshit language that where people would try to like make everything seem so goddamn cool. Uh, I was just keeping it real. And my favorite part of the resume was the, well, first off, I was like giving lessons during the fucking, like saying what lessons I learned in certain work experiences. I thought that was awesome. Secondly, I love the education because I put like, I put formal education and then Southwood, but then I put real education 
<laughs> and then I put MF CEO, Gary's podcast, and then uh, Tim Ferriss show and Global Information Network, which is Jin, which I've talked about in the past. So like those key four things right there have been massive for me, okay? And like have taught me so, 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 so much more than anything else out there. Uh, yeah, so I was super grateful for that. And it was very like sassy, fuck the system type of thing. Granted, I did have to change it because I ran out of space on my resume. So I had to just keep them on in education. But I thought it was really funny because those are the real educations. What the fuck am I going to learn from uh, an outdated school curriculum? Things change so much in the world so fast that I just have no fucking desire to listen to listen to school yeah that's basically it what am i obsessed with right now looping never say die volume six songs i listen to companies song justice i think 80 times in one, and i think it was like 70 in one day or something nuts like that was five fucking hours of the exact same song and it was so good because i actually had a really productive day with that and now that song is just anchored to getting shit done. So fuck yeah to that. Another one I was looping is Eptic's Ready to Die. That song is amazing. Probably my favorite Eptic song to date. And what else was I listening to? Let me just look at actually the, the songs. But I was listening to the whole album. Like it's just so fucking good. Um, what else was I listening to? Some face break? No, not a ton of facebreaker though hearing it last night was fucking insane to hear it live i was in love with it i was losing my shit um such good fucking vocals on that song it's insane um a little bit of a little bit of uh whiplash by space laces and topi and a little bit of rock like this lax remix um yeah what a great fucking album a little bit of trouble by sultan or Sultan, I don't actually know how to pronounce these motherfuckers' names. But anyways, I'm very pleased that uh, that album is getting some hate online about it being overrated and stuff like that. I think people's expectations are too high. If you look at it on a more objective level, but it, which is funny for me to say because it's a pin, purely opinion, but if you take a step back and like remove expectations, I would say Never Say Die Volume 6 is the best yet. I mean, a lot of it does sound the same. Or... That's a lie, actually. It does not sound the same. Um, but there are song, certain songs that do very closely resemble each other and certain artists and stuff like that. So that's a flaw, quote unquote. But at the same time, the songs are so damn nice. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. It's just great fucking music. Yeah, like 17 out of the 20 songs I'm, I'm a fan of. So it's, uh, it's been a good time. Anyways, I am done. I have nothing else to add. I hope this episode came out well. I'm not sure if this is the best. I, I think it was a decent episode. Definitely not the best yet because it just wasn't. <laughs> but uh, it's just my truth in a given week. I'm looking forward to starting all that reflection and hopefully I get this fucking reflections 2019 or 2018 up and ready soon because I'm going to be hopefully doing a reflections just based on the year. So I'm excited to see how that goes. Uh, if this brought any value, entertain, entertainment, motivation, inspiration, education, what have you, uh, if you could be so kind as to engage with it somehow wherever you are, so whether that's a like, a love, a share, a, uh, a retweet, a, a, uh, a rating on the podcast, a follow or subscribe or what have you, if you want to Join along on my journey. Would love to have you. It's super fucking cool to me. Uh, yeah. And uh, that is all for now. I will catch you next week for Reflections 25. Holy fuck. For, or a quarter way to 100. That's insane. And uh, as always, my name is Josh Moxie. And I will catch you later. Get this, it'll take practice. <laughs>